Russia, that's where we are visiting today. <laughs> Can you tell me something about Russia? Yes, it's cold, <laughs> right? You think it's cold? Oh, it's a big country. It is a huge country. What else do you have? Stuff about history. Yeah, it actually has a rough history in the wars. And I don't think we're, we might touch on that a little bit today, but we're not really going to focus on that. We're going to see what else we can learn about Russia as we go through the alphabet from A to Z. They're going to show us different things about Russia. And they're even going to say some words in Russian. I don't speak Russian, okay? There will be words in this book that I do not know how to pronounce, and that's okay. When you visit a different country, one thing about traveling, and I love traveling and hearing new languages, but language is one of the hardest things about traveling there. And guess what? You just try your best. So that's what we're going to do. I didn't even practice any of these words. Sometimes I'll flip through and I'll go, hmm, I think I know how to say this. I didn't even practice Russian because I don't know it at all. Chances are I'm going to try to say it in Spanish, and I know that's not going to be right. So we're just going to do our best. First, let's start with a map, and let's see where Russia is located. And the very first word they want to tell us is privet. Privet. That means hi in Russian. So Russia is the biggest country in the world. You can see on this map right here, it's highlighted in orange, and it crosses two continents. Look how wide this country is. Now, go straight across, and it lines up with Canada, maybe the northern part of the U.S. So look how far north it is, too. Yeah, that's why we think it's cold. So it crosses those two continents of Europe and Asia, and almost 145 million people live in Russia. It ranks eight in the world's population. The very eastern edge of Russia, so if we go to the eastern edge of Russia, it's only 51 miles from Alaska's western coast. So let me pull this back up. So they're saying from that very eastern tip of Russia over to Alaska, that is only about 51 miles away. And on the map over here, it kind of cuts off, but you know it's a globe and it goes, and it, this is where we're looking from where Alaska ends and Russia begins. You can see it right there. Yeah. So let's start with letter A and see what we learn about Russia today. <laughs> a, I told you, you didn't practice. Don't even know what's in here. A is for the alphabet. Well, that's convenient. People in Russia don't use the same letters that we do to write in English. Hmm. They use Cyrillic alphabet, which has 33 letters, and some Russian letters, such as the H and the B, look like English letters, but they don't sound the same. So take a look at some of their letters. It looks a little different, doesn't it? Like, what is that right there? Is that a weird-looking N? What is that, an R? Look how the look how some of these look a little bit different. Yeah, so their alphabet is different. Down at the bottom, it tells us that two monks named Cyril and Methodius invented Russia's current alphabet in the 800s. The Cyrillic alphabet takes its name from Cyril. That makes sense. B is for ballet. Okay, I knew that one. Did you know that Russia is associated with the ballet? Yeah. So Russia is home to the two most famous ballet companies in the world. Whew. Okay. So I'm going to say the one as Bolshoi Ballet and the Pirov Ballet. These two companies train children to become world famous dancers. Hundreds of children try out for the spots in these ballet, ballet schools each year, but very few are chosen. So this is a very competitive dancing sport um, in Russia. LA. C is for a SAR. Say it like a Z, like the C is silent, but it starts with C. Did you know that, that SARS exist there? Yeah. Russia was once ruled by SARS. A SAR is like a king. And in the early 1900s, people were becoming unhappy with the way the SARS had been ruling Russia. The Tsars lived in incredible riches, while many others starved. Russia's last Tsar, Nicholas II, was forced to give up his throne in 1917. And today, the Tsar's magnificent old palaces are among Russia's most famous tourist attractions. And D is for doll. Now, have you played with these before? Have you seen these? 
where you open up the big one and this one goes inside and then you open up the next one and they all go inside? Yeah, well, from Russia. So many visitors to Russia return home with these beautiful hand-painted dolls. The hollow wooden dolls come stacked inside one another. And as each doll is opened up, a smaller one can be found inside. And I think down here it says these nesting dolls are called, ooh, matroshkas. Maybe? Maybe somebody who knows Russian can help me out and correct me. E is for Europe. Hmm. Why are we talking about Europe? Russia's east, uh, sorry, Russia's European part is much smaller than its Asian part, because remember it sits on both continents. Yet more than three fourths of the Russian people live in Europe. Much of the Asian Russia is too cold to live in, but it is rich in natural resources such as coal and oil. So the mountains pictured here are a part of the rural mountain range, the <laughs> rural, the rural. U-R-A-L, okay? And these mountains run north and south between European Russia and Asian Russia. F is for their flag. Did you know this was their flag? The Russian flag was designed by Tsar Peter the Great in 1699. It was used until 1918 after a new type of government had come to power. The new rulers, called communists, designed a different flag. When the communists left power in 1991, the country went back to the original three stripes flag. So if you got a little confused on the flags, that's probably why. So fast fact is that some people say the white stands for kindness, the blue stands for loyalty, and the red stands for courage. B is for Grandfather Frost. Hmm, kind of looks like Santa, right? But a slightly different story. So Grandfather Frost is a symbol of Russia's most important holiday, the New Year's Day. Russian children believe Grandfather Frost brings them gifts on this day. Grandfather Frost looks a lot like Santa Claus. He drives a sleigh led by horses and a snow maiden helps him give out the gifts. The fast fact says that some Russians celebrate New Year's Day twice. On January 1st and on January 14th, before 1918, Russia used a different system for keeping track of months and years. And according to this old system, January 14th is the New Year's Day. That's pretty cool to have two different New Year's Days. H is for hockey. Yes, of course we knew that H was, or that um, hockey is associated with Russia. So Russians love to both play hockey and watch hockey. Many top Russian hockey players moved to the United States and Canada to play for the National Hockey League teams. Because Russia stays cold much of the year, Russians also enjoy sports such as ice skating and sledding. Other popular sport sports are soccer, basketball, volleyball, and gymnastics. I is for icon. Let's see what they say. So I is for icon. Icons are portraits of saints painted on wooden panels right here. Members of the Russian Orthodox religion use icons to help them pray. Russia's churches are full of these colorful detailed paintings and people also display them in their homes. So you can see the lady is at, in front of one of those icons and I believe those are candles and she's praying. Fast Facts says most of the churches in Russia are Russian Orthodox, which is a very old form of Christianity. And J is for jeweled egg. I've seen these before. I've never done one of these, but have you seen these? The jeweled egg. Can I, okay, so Peter Carl Fabergé, 1846 to 1920, he crafted jeweled eggs for Russia's czars. He painted the eggs with real gold, and he decorated them with rubies and emeralds and diamonds. So today, Fabergé's relatives still create these beautiful eggs. Wealthy Russians give them as gifts on Easter. Now, I've seen people paint these just like with paint, and I don't think that I've ever, you know, used gold to paint, but that would be amazing to see the emeralds and the jewels on there as well. Hey, 
A is for the Kremlin. Now we're gonna have a brief history lesson here. So K is for the Kremlin. The Kremlin is a walled structure located in the heart of Moscow, Russia's capital city. Its name means fortress right here. And the Kremlin was built more than 500 years ago as a center for Russia's government. Today, the office of the Russian president is still inside the Kremlin walls. And down below it says the Kremlin holds the world's biggest bell, named the Tsar Bell. It weighs 200 tons. And L is for a lake that I don't know how to say. Baikal? 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 It's the deepest lake in the world, and it holds more water than all of the Great Lakes of North America combined. So all of our Great Lakes, combine them together, and this lake still holds more water. Lake Bikal is home to 2,000 kinds of plants and animals, and of these, 1,000 are found nowhere else. So over half of their plants and animals are unique just to right here. And another fast fact, it is as deep as one mile deep in some places a massively large lake. M, we've already mentioned it. M is for Moscow. Now, Moscow is the capital and the largest city of Russia. More than 8 million people live here. The city is very crowded and most people live in tiny apartments that often have just a bathroom and one or two other rooms. So during weekends and holidays, many people from Moscow spend time at their um, small cottages. Okay, there's a word here, but it's basically they go out to their small cottages that are usually located outside of the city to spend time um, away from the city. So that's Moscow. And N is for NERPAs. <laughs> All right, not gonna lie, these are one of my favorite animals to take pictures of when I'm in Alaska, which is very close to Russia. So it makes sense that they would have similar wildlife, right? So nerpas are seals that live only in Lake Bikal. They are the world's only seal that live in fresh water instead of the ocean. So the ones I saw were in ocean, these are in the fresh water. They can stay underwater for 70 minutes. That's over an hour long. And most other seals can only be underwater for 20 minutes. Hmm. That's very neat. Oh. Uh, oh, I am pretty sure I should know this. O is for Ovna and Ovich. I think that's how that's said. So each Russian has three names. You have a first name, a middle name, that's based on um, your father's first name and a last name. So let's do that again. You have a first name. You have a middle name that is based on your father's first name. Okay, so think of what's your dad's first name. And then your middle name is kind of like that. But when you're a girl, the middle name ends with Ovna or Yevna. And if you're a boy, the middle name ends with Ovik or Yevik. Russian children are usually call, um, usually called their teachers by their first and their middle name. So, for example, let's see here. Olga is daughter of Roman. So it's Olga Romanova. Okay, let's go down to Anna. Let's do that again. Anna is daughter of basically Gregory. So it's Anna Gregoryevna. Okay, Michael or Mika. Um, Mikal is son of Gregory. So instead of saying Yevna, you go Yevich. So it's Mikal Gregoryevich. You follow what we're doing here? And then down here, Sergi is son of Roman. So same with Roman. These are brother and sisters. And she said Romanova. And here it's Romanovich. Or maybe Ick. Right? So it just depends on the end of the name and you're named after your father's name with a slight ending on it, depending if you're a guy or a girl. Kind of neat. P is for piroshki. Oh, that's a, that's a food that you might know about. These are small pastries that are stuffed with meat, vegetables, or cheese. They are often served with a beet soup called borscht. Other rochen, rochen, 
<laughs> I said Russian. Other Russian dishes are blini, which are thin pancakes, and caviar, which are tiny fish eggs. So down here it says many people drink tea after the main meal of the day, usually served at one in the afternoon. And sometimes they sweeten their tea with jam. And you can see a family that's um, trying all those things that we just tried to um, say. Phew, is for the queen. In chess, each game piece has a name, and the queen is the most important piece. The Russian people, probably more than any other, love to play chess. Ordinary people play it with passion, but Russia is also famous for producing world-class players. So we're not actually talking about the queen here, but let's see what it else it says about chess down here. The magazine Chess Informant asks its readers to name the top 10 chess players in the past 100 years. Four, four out of the 10 players were from Russia. Top 10 chess players. They have a lot of them. All right, R is for the ruble. We're talking about money. Russia's unit of money is the ruble. Rubles come in coins and bills, and one ruble equals 100 kopecks. Coins range from one kopeck to five rubles. Bills go from five to 1,000 rubles. So, you know, there's always a system of, of, of coins and, and bills, and you can learn more about this and go into some more details if we just look it up online, right? Especially before you travel there, you definitely need to know how their money system works. S is for St. Basil's Cathedral. Look how beautiful this is. This cathedral was built in the mid 1500s for Tsar Ivan the Terrible. It is located near the Kremlin in Moscow and the building's colorful walls and onion-shaped domes are famous symbols of Russia. All these onion-shaped domes, that's really the, um, what I want to say, like on a lot of their cathedrals and churches and stuff, that's what is on a lot of the tops. And according to legend, the cathedral's designers were blinded after the cathedral was finished. That way, they could never create anything so beautiful again. Yikes, that's horrible. P is for the taiga. We're going to go with taiga, okay? It's a forest. It's a huge forested region. It stretches across northern Russia. Temperatures in the taiga stay below freezing for more than six months of the year. Because of the cold weather, only a few kinds of plants can live there. But the forest is thick with dark evergreen trees, such as the spruce and the pine. And Russians take special pride in the solemn beauty of this region. And Russia is also home to one-fifth of the world's forests. They have that many trees in the, oh, that's a lot of forest. U is for the USSR. Now, from 1922 until 1991, Russia was part of an even larger country. This country was called the USSR, or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. You hear the cat in the background? Sorry. <laughs> The USSR was the most powerful communist country in the world, and under communist rule, everything, including land, factories, and houses, belonged to the government. When the communists lost power, the USSR broke into separate countries. So this was their area, and that was their flag. And we are going to talk about V. V is for Vladivostok. Vladivostok. It is an important port city on Russia's, on Russia's eastern edge, and it's also the last stop on the Trans-Siberian Railway. The ride across Russia from Moscow to this town takes six to seven days, but the long trip is the best way to see the country's vast and varied land. The rail system, or this railroad, plays an important part in Russia's economy. Instead of trucks, these trains carry most of Russia's goods around the country. So did you know that trains were that important in Russia? Okay, we have W. W is for white knights. And in, in a different city, St. Petersburg, 
It's a city in the northern part of Russia. During the last weeks of June, the sun stays out in St. Petersburg for almost 24 hours of the day because they're far enough north, okay? This special time is called White Nights. People celebrate with parties and festivals, and some people don't sleep for days at a time. A fast fact says, on the longest day of the year, the sun doesn't set in St. Petersburg until two o'clock in the morning, and it rises again just half an hour later. So white nights are definitely something that's known for the northern part of Russia. And we go to X, which are exports. So with exports, even though it technically starts with an E, Russia produces large amounts of oil and natural gas metal and timber because of their forest and the country exports these goods to other countries. Russia is the world's second largest exporter of oil. We're almost there. What are we going to learn with why? Is this going to be a person? Hmm. I think I would know this. His name is Yuri Gagarin. He's a Russian man. He was the first person to go to outer space. On April the 12th of 1961, he orbited Earth in his spacecraft Vostok 1. The whole trip took about one hour and 48 minutes. And the first woman in space was also Russian, Valentina, I don't know her name, um, Tereshkova, made a three-day flight in June of 1963. So the um, a Russian dog also went up into space before any humans ever did. And the dog orbited Earth on November 3rd of 1957. So if you know a lot about the space programs, um, and when we went to the moon, we were competing with Russia to kind of see who could get there first. So there was a lot of competition for outer space in that time range. And Z is for time zones. So this is really interesting. I think it is a time zone. It's an area in which the same time is used, right? So throughout even um, the lower part of the uh, of the U.S., the lower 48 states, we have four different time zones, right? So in Russia, um, hold on. So the whole Earth is divided into 24 time zones because there's 24 hours in a day. So Russia is so huge that it spans 11 time zones. 11. We have four. They have 11. Well, we actually have five, six, if you include um, Alaska and Hawaii, okay? So when it is noon in the westernmost part of Russia, it is 10 o'clock at night along the eastern edge. So one side of Russia, it's noon. The other side, it is 10 p.m. Crazy. Another fast fact is that Russia covers about one eighth of all of the land on Earth. So of course we had to learn about Russia because it's such a big country and did you learn anything new today? Yeah. So I'm Cassie, and thank you for taking this trip with us today. Next week, we are bringing our adventure a bit closer to home. We're traveling to visit our next-door neighbor, Mexico, and we will see you there.